Welcome to my 2016 film retrospective. This is yet again such an incredible year I could not memorize all of my honorable mentions. So here we go. Captain America Civil War, La La Land, Hell or High Water, Ten Cloverfield Lane, Hunt for the Wilder People, Hail Caesar, and The Red Turtle. If you haven't seen those, make sure to check them out. And if you disagree with me, look me up on Twitter and at me, at camera underscore flat. So my favorite bad movie for this year is Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice. Oh, even the title lets you know that you're in for a slog of a film that over the years I've come to appreciate as a ridiculous movie that I love for how self-serious and ridiculous that it is. I want to love this movie. I'm a gigantic Superman fan. I was so excited for the film, first real movie appearance of Wonder Woman. And as a film geek, I do obviously have a mental amount of respect for Batman as a character and know kind of how that character can represent and be represented in a great film. Obviously, Dark Knight Trilogy, awesome. And Michael Keaton, awesome. And the animated show from the 90s, awesome. And this movie shows a ridiculous lack of awareness for how these characters should be presented. And all super well cast, especially Cavill and Gal Gadot. Especially Gal Gadot would go on in her own movie to show how amazing she can be in this role. Nonetheless, there's actually some fun action in this movie. I like a lot of the cinematography. And like I said, I like the actors. And at the time, I kind of respected what Eisenberg was going for. Over the years, it's really graded on me, but it's still kind of entertaining how ridiculous it is. And this movie's kind of uh, legendary at this point for how uh, just much, how much we all hate it and how some people love it. And so that's kind of the perfect good, bad movie I feel. I've watched it multiple times. And at this point, I do enjoy watching it, but not for the reasons I think Zack Snyder intended this the second time one of his movies have showed up because, like I said earlier, he uh, is an interesting filmmaker and I still always will, will respect his films even if I put them in this slot. My overlooked recommendation is a stop motion film called My Life as a Zucchini. This is a French film that got dubbed into English. I probably watched the, the French version, but the, the English dub is really quite good. And this is a movie about a young boy growing up in an orphanage and it's really not what you expect. If you look at its cover and the title, you think it's just a kid's movie. It's so much more than that. It really deals with you know, what's it like to be family, what's it like to deal with hardship, what's it like to deal with loss, and through the, the scope and through the lens of children. And I think that's a really good way to tell this story. And it's a touching movie. And I love movies that don't really have a bad guy per se. There is a character that's certainly a villain, but she's a small role. But like the bully character ends up being a multifaceted, complicated character. I love those kinds of movies. I love movies that are meant for kids that try and get at deeper concepts and are, are deeper than they would appear on the surface. So, and you probably haven't heard of it because it's originally a French film and stop motion film and it looks a little, like it's a little for little kids. It's so much more than that. Definitely check it out. So my favorite film from 2016 is Everybody Wants Some. Two exclamation points in the official title. It earns those exclamation points because this movie freaking rocks. I was originally very skeptical because I do not like Boyhood, the last film from this director, and I was not looking forward to this because it's an impossible movie to advertise because it has no plot and it's kind of meandering. And I don't know if it would have landed for me the same way it did if it hadn't come out this year. This was the year that I moved off to university. I watched this movie just a few weeks before I moved there. When I came to the University of Missouri, all I could think about the first few weeks was this movie. Because this movie absolutely nails what college life is like. The movie, the entirety of the movie takes place over the first week before classes started when everyone's moving in and I had a very similar experience and even when I first watched the movie, I watched it twice in a week when I first uh, when I first came out on DVD and instantly fell in love with it because it's got such a great execution. This is such a difficult movie to pull off. A movie with no plot really. Um, it's very character centric and um, it's funny and honestly it has really good character beats and it's got a little bit of romance in there and it's just, um, I wouldn't say it's like a full-on comedy, it's just kind of a, what you call a slice of life, slice of life movie. There's just so much to like about it, especially as a college kid myself. I'd imagine if you were in college in the 80s you enjoyed it, if you've ever been to college you enjoy it, if you like kind of Animal House but you want something a little bit more artistic, I think it really is really, really solid. And um, if you're a big Richard Linklater fan, you've, you've got to check it out. Um, everyone in it is really, really good. There's a bunch of actors in this that were just about to make it and so it's right before they really launch and they're all really excellent in it. And it's just such a memorable movie. I don't think you'll forget that you've seen it. And it, <laughs> whereas a lot of the characters are kind of unlikable, they're also likable at the same time. And you feel like you're having a good time along with them. And 
it's just an infectiously entertaining, energetic movie that I fell in love with. It's very special to me because I'm in college and I connected with it. But I think there's also a lot of to like about it for anyone that wants to see this movie. And that's what I've got to say about that. So let's move on to 2017. In 2016, retros, uh, 2016 film. Uh, my entire list. I hated uh, La La Land. Uh, 